In section 9.2, we take a look at testing a claim made about two population means. Let's take a look at this example. It says data on the weights of the contents of cans of diet soda versus the contents of cans of the regular version of the soda is summarized to the right. Assume that the two samples are independent simple random samples selected from normally distributed populations. And do not assume that the population standard deviations are equal. Complete parts A and B below. Use a 0.01 significance level for both parts. So now in the table on the right, we're given a summary of the data. Now diet soda, this is our first population. It's denoted with mu sub one. And then the regular soda, regular soda is our population two. It's denoted by mu sub two. Now for part A, it says test the claim that the contents of cans of diet soda have weights with a mean that is less than the mean of the regular soda. So let's go ahead and write out what the original claim is, and that way we can figure out our null and alternative hypothesis. So the original claim is that mu sub one, let me write that a little bit better. So mu sub one is less than mu sub two. So the mean of diet soda the contents, the mean of the contents of the diet soda is less than the mean of the contents of regular soda. Now, step two, what would be true if the original claim is false? Well, mu sub one would have to be greater than or equal to mu sub two. Step three, null and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis always includes equals, so mu sub one is equal to mu sub two. Then the alternative you have to take a look at steps one and two. It's the one that does not include the equal to symbol. So then does, the one that does not contain the equal to symbol is the original claim itself, the part in step one. So mu sub one is less than mu sub two. Okay. So now since our alternative hypothesis contains the less than, less than symbol, this is a two tail test, I'm sorry, left tail test. Left tailed test. Okay. So now let's go ahead and put that information into the homework problem. Okay, it looks like answer choice D. Null hypothesis mu sub 1 is equal to mu sub 2. Alternative mu sub 1 is less than mu sub 2. Okay, now it's asking us for the test statistic. So now for the test statistic, let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch and we'll put the summary that we have. So now in StatCrunch, we're gonna to go to stat. And now since we're dealing with a population mean, we're gonna to go to T stats. And what we have here is two samples and we're given a summary. So now let's go ahead and put the information that we need. So sample mean for sample one, that's the diet soda. That's denoted with X bar, that's the sample mean. So let's go ahead and put that in, 0 0.78728. And then the standard deviation, 0 0.00434. Sample size is 37. Now sample two, mean is 0 0.81181. Sample standard deviation, 0 0.00744. And then the sample size, also 37. And we want to perform a hypothesis test. So remember with the, in StatCrunch, the null hypothesis is just going to be in a different format. We have mu sub one minus mu sub two is equal to zero. And then the alternative would be mu sub one minus mu sub two is less than zero. Let's go ahead and put show critical value put the significance, which is 0 0.01. Remember, so that critical value, important if you're using the critical value method. So now our test statistic over here, this T stat, we have negative 17, round to two decimal places, so negative 17.32. Now the P value, so it says round to three decimal places as needed. So it says less than, so here's our P value, less than 0 0.0001. So usually the stack crunch only goes to four decimal places. This is telling us it's not technically zero, but it's very, very close to it. 
So when we round to three decimal places, this is actually just 0 0.000. Now let's go ahead and address the null hypothesis. So since our p-value here, since this is less than the significance level, let's go back so we can see that. So we ended up with the p-value of 0 0.000, and then our significance level is 0 0.01. Well, we can see here that our p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So that means that we reject the null hypothesis. So we reject the null hypothesis, and since the original claim did not include equals, that means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that diet soda, the mean of diet soda, is less than the mean contents of regular soda. So let's go back and see which one of those answer choices that is. Maximize this window real quick. So we're rejecting the null hypothesis, which means our answer choice is B or C. And we said that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the cans of diet soda have mean weights that are lower than the mean weight of regular soda. Now for part B, we're going to go ahead and construct a confidence interval. So let's go back to stack crunch. Now in StackCrunch, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Options, click on Edit, and now it's, so all my information is still in there. Now instead of performing a hypothesis test, I want to construct a confidence interval, but we have to select the correct level. Okay, so let's go back. Now since this is a left tail test, the correct confidence level that we're going to be that we're going to have to use. So since it's a one-tailed test, now remember, if it's a left-tailed or a right-tailed test, that means it's a one-tailed test. So if one-tailed test, the confidence level would be one minus alpha, I'm sorry, one minus two times alpha. So this would be one minus two times 0 0.01. So it's going to give us 1 minus 0 0.02, which gives us 0 0.98. So we have to use a 98% confidence level. Now let's go back to StatCrunch and put that. So we have 98, 0.98. Let's click on Compute. And now we have our confidence interval right over here. So lower limit. We have negative 0 0.02, round to three decimal places, so negative 0 0.028. And then the upper limit, we have negative 0 0.021. Okay. So now it says, does the confidence interval support the conclusion found in the hypothesis test? Remember, the null hypothesis that we rejected was saying that the means were equal to each other. But we rejected that. We're saying that the means are not equal. Okay. And now, since our confidence interval here, since it only contains negative values, that means that the mean weight for diet soda is less than the mean weight for regular soda. Because the only way that you can get negative numbers is if you're subtracting a larger number from a smaller one. So let's go over here. Does the confidence interval support the conclusion? Yes, it does. And this is because the confidence interval contains only negative values.